know that Reverend Leah already opened us up in prayer this morning. But if you would just stretch out your hand and pray with me this morning. The Spirit of the living God. Would you fall afresh? Would you attune our hearts and our minds and our hands and our feet to your presence? Would you attune our hearts and our spirits to one another? Would you remind us of the reasons why we gather in this place? Reasons that extend far beyond the walls of the physical building that are bonded by your love and by your son. We thank you for the gift of presence. We recognize that you are already here, that you are already working. And may our praise reflect that back. May our hearts be firm, be convicted, be strengthened, and our minds renewed for the work ahead. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, your precious
so our souls, oh God, our souls, our spirits, oh God, long for you, oh God. As the deep panted for the water, so my soul.
family of Jelani Porter. Jelani is the former student of Shalisa Thomas who drowned in a tragic accident over the 4th of July weekend. We pray for this family as they mourn and grieve. Bishop Joe Amos, father of Shalisa Thomas, diagnosed with colon cancer, we believe God for healing and prayer for strength and comfort. We pray and believe God for healing for Brittany Shook, Lisa Deacon, uh, Robert McLemore, Annette McLemore, Ye Hagler, daughter of Mr. Kermit, Randy Siler, and Deacon Ronald Please continue to pray for the August 4th election that's coming up, all of the candidates on the ballot, and for voter turnout and protection. Amen. We also pray for our leaders, community members, friends, and family as we comprehend the changes in laws that greatly impact humankind. Yes. We continue to pray for those who make decisions that affect the lives of others and for the human right to just like to add if we could just pray uh, stay God focused with all that's going on in the world and uh, I just pray Joshua chapter, chapter 1 verse 9 and have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage do not be afraid or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go Amen
if we can have a few ushers, Elder uh, Deacon Larry, if we can have a few ushers here at the church by 8.30 so that we can prepare the place um, for receiving of the family. If we can have elders and deacons in place to assist however they may need on the program, there will be some printed names, but there may be some spaces that we just need to jump in and fill. We want to surround this family with so much love. This has been a tremendous journey for them, and we are grateful to God that he has received, she has received Maria into, the, into heaven's gates. And so we want to do what we are called to do as Christians, as siblings, and to surround this family with love. So services, 9 a.m. visitation, 10 a.m. will be the um, funeral service. At 1 p.m. we will be at Greenwood North for the burial and then we will be back here and we will need some servers if you will reach out to Elder Darlene we will need some servers to serve that family um, a repast after the burial here at the church and so I'm grateful to you for your ministry and just ask that you come alongside and let's do what we do best and that is love on this family while they are in the valley so um, Hannah's birthday is tomorrow, and so if you'll just drop them in the slot while we're here for the general board meeting tomorrow, we're going to pretty up her office so that when she walks in on Tuesday, she knows that she is so loved and appreciated for the many things that she does for this church. Many of them probably go unnoticed, but she is always behind the scenes, moving and shaking and making sure that meetings and ministry happens in a grand way. Um, and so um, please, please, please um, drop a card in the mail slot. If it's already in the mail, wonderful. We're just going to leave everything on our desk. So when she arrives Tuesday, she will be celebrated. Now, last uh, announcement that I'd like to draw attention to, that is Regional Assembly happening October 7th and 8th. Um, please, please, please mark your calendar. It is happening in Nashville in Nashville, and so we want to be sure that New Covenant is present and accounted for. It's an awesome opportunity to see the work of the region, to meet other people ranging from um, Johnson City area all the way to Memphis and to Chattanooga, and to meet other Christian Church Disciples of Christ members um, that we are in uh, doing this work with. And so we invite you, it will be held at Vine Street um, out on West End. Um, and it will be 7 p.m. on, I'm sorry, 6 p.m. on Friday night and then 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. And there are some other events that are taking place for clergy and other groups of women's um, disciples, women and disciples, men. So please just check your covenant news and events or go to CC. DCTN.org, and you will find all of the information you need to register. There's also some um, applications on the back table. If you'd prefer to fill it out in paper, just leave it. Um, you can leave it here, and we'll make sure that it gets there. If you are in need of financial assistance, please, um, and no, no judgment zone here at New Covenant, go to Elder Lockridge or Elder Valerie, and we will be sure that your fees are covered. We just want you to be able to participate and to take place, uh, take take part in this awesome, awesome, awesome regional assembly right here in National Tennessee. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark your calendars for July 31st. It is a social justice Sunday, and we have a wonderful conversation <laughs> planned. Um, with around the uh, topic right to work that will be on the November ballot. And so we're going to be offering some education from now until uh, to be sure that we understand what that um, amendment is that is on the ballot so that we know how to vote when we go to the polls and to make an educated vote when we cast it. Amen. July 31st.
the opportunity to gather as a household of faith. God, to worship you, God, to empty out all of us, God, and to refill ourselves with you. God, we are so thankful that you invite us in to worship. God, and that you rest with us. God, we're grateful that you can move mountains, that you can break the unbreakable. God, and that you can do even the unimaginable. And so, God, as we turn to the preaching time, God, we ask, God, that you will open us up for fresh revelation of your word. God, that it will encourage us, oh God, to continue to do this work that you have called us to do. That you, God, will help us to continue to be the hands and feet of this, your word, to make it a living word. God, may it be used to strengthen us. To refreshing us. And to set us up, oh God, to do this work together. To call and draw all men unto you. God, we love you. We celebrate you. In Jesus' name. Speak, Lord. Amen. Amen. Won't you open your Bible with me today and turn to the Gospel of St. Luke? St. Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 through 37. Luke, chapter 10. Verses 25 through 37. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But the lawyer, wanting to vindicate himself, he asked Jesus, and who is? my neighbor. And Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of a robber, of robbers, who stripped him, beat him, and took off, and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down the road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, too passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating them with oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. 
Grass withers and flowers fade, but the word of God stands for all generations. In most of our Bibles, at the top of this pericope is a header that reads the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's a very familiar text that most of us have heard and studied, likely from a little child in Sunday school. I know I was taught that it, was, it is my Christian duty to be a good Samaritan. Someone who helps a stranger or voluntarily helps someone who is in distress. Someone who does good deeds out of compassion and not in expectancy or in hope of a reward. Using the words of Dr. A.J. Levine, a former professor of mine during my tenure at Vanderbilt Divinity School and the author of the book Short Stories by Jesus, the, en the enigmatic parable of controversial rabbi. Throughout English speaking world, the term Good Samaritan is synonymous with charitable do-gooders. It is, it is well known, uh, it is a well known message of aiding a stranger and it is used widely. A number of hospitals and medical centers bear the name Good Samaritan and they stretch from Baltimore to Los Angeles. In Antioch, Tennessee, just a few miles east of here, we have an Antioch Good Samaritan Health and Rehab. It also became a staple in political discourse as George W. Bush invoked this biblical story in his January 21 inauguration speech saying, and I quote, I can pledge our nation to a goal when we see that wounded traveler on the road to Jericho, we will not pass to the other side. It was also the emphasis of Queen Elizabeth's 2020 Christmas Day speech where she said, and I quote, Good Samaritans have emerged across society showing care and respect for all, regardless of gender, race, or background, reminding us that each one of us is so special and equal in the eyes of God. She was referring to those who had e emerged uh, amidst the pandemic that we call COVID and regardless of a, a gender, race, or background, were seeking to care for all who encountered the pandemic. It's easy for us to identify Good Samaritan. We give to the man or woman on the corner uh, as we pass them by. We don't know donate clothes to the local shelter. We don't even have to get out. We pull up and they come get it. Or we give a box of food here or there. Or we volunteer at a local food bank or shelter. Yesterday, Deacon Chan and I had dentist appointments in the Melrose area and we decided that we wanted Chick-fil-A before heading over here um, to the church to prepare for worship today. And so we were sitting in the parking space waiting for curbside delivery and um, enjoying some conversation and we noticed a woman next door standing uh, in the Bank of America parking lot next to an ATM machine. And each time a car would pull up, she would approach them and some conversation would ensue and slowly but surely she would drop her head and walk away. I imagined that she was asking for money. And so eventually she came to the fence line that divided the Chick-fil-A parking lot and the Bank of America parking lot and began talking to customers who would jump out of their car to run to pick up their food or to position a child in the car as they waited for a delivery. And so she would beckon for someone to come to the fence line just to engage with her in conversation. And wanting to help, I rolled down my window trying to hear what her needs might be and how others in the parking lot were seeking to meet that need. And I couldn't hear exactly what she was saying, but I figured she would eventually work her way up the fence line where Deacon Chan and I were parked. But as I was waiting for her to come, my phone rang, uh, and, and as the window, uh, as as the food was being passed through the window, uh, I could hear the woman saying, "Hey, aren't you a pastor?" And I was. 
taking a call and I got distracted and the caller says, I can see that you are busy. And I said, just hold on. I need to take your call too, but I also need to tend to this conversation that's happening at my car. And, and so Deacon respond, Chan responded and said, my wife is the pastor, but, but how can we, how can we help you? And so she proceeds to share her story. And, and so Chan then turns to me and begins to ask me a question, but I was trying to focus on what the caller was saying because that conversation was just as important as the woman at the fence. But here I was juxtaposed talking and handling the situation on the phone and tending to the very that was in front of me. And so I reached for my wallet and I carry cash, typically Deacon Chan doesn't. And all I had in, the, in my wallet was a dollar, but I gave it to him and I said, pass it on to the woman. And when the call ended, I, I was able to hear more of the story and I wish that I had stopped in the midst of the other situation and just took a moment to pop over to the ATM machine and give the woman more than what I had in my purse. Truth is, I don't keep much cash in my wallet because uh, whenever there is money in there, I always seem to just give it away. I also had to admit that if, if he had not been with me, I likely would have never stopped the conversation that I was having on the phone to even attend to the needs of the woman at the fence. I don't know about you, but often I want to help every person I see, and my reality is I cannot save everyone. Alone, I do not have the resources. Can you turn this one down, Deacon Chan? Alone, I do not have the resources, the time, the money, the energy, the strength, the creativity, the hope to meet the needs of all who, li who life has beaten down and left to die on the side of the road. What if we reconcile that this is not our work, Elder Kathy, to do alone? What if this story is beyond the good Samaritan? Today I invite us to consider a different interpretation of this text. What if the me and you, the priest and the Levite in this text actually represent the organized church? In the parable, Jesus says that the priest and the temple assistant who was a Le Levite both see the man and they avoid him. We might have expected one of these religious leaders to stop and show their wounded countryman some love, but instead they keep walking. The traditional read of this text causes us to judge the priest and the Levite falling, failing to remember that priests and Levites would have needed to keep themselves emotionally clean, particularly if they were headed up to Jerusalem for their religious duties. Meaning that there could be a justifiable reason for their failure to act. The priest and the Levite passed the Jewish man by, restricted by their religious systems, restricted by this pulpit, restricted by these pews. Help me, Holy Spirit. We are very aware there's godly institutions that prevent us from seeing who Jesus sees and from helping those who God desires to help. Often our religious traditions and restrictions have us so bound up that we can't stop and show mercy to someone who does not look like, think like, act like, or have a little, uh, have a title except the one we've given them, rusted, busted, and disgusted. That's right. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. I, 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 can talk, I can't talk to them uh, because they're addicted to drugs. I can't give them money because they're going to go out and buy drugs. They're going to go out and, 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 and spend the money on something other than what I'm giving them the money for. Amen. Let me go ahead and cross the street right here so they don't ask me for nothing. Amen. I'm talking about religious folks. While the term Good Samaritan is trendy, I believe, Erica, that this text is pushing us to be a good neighbor, irrespective and regardless of our tribe, our class, our gender, and any other identifiers known to us by humankind. The lawyer asked the question, who is my neighbor? 
Jesus never identifies one's neighbor, but demonstrates what it means to be a neighbor. Yeah. A neighbor who's one who sees and acts with compassion. Rather than the church, that's me and you, identifying as a good Samaritan or one who is a charitable do-gooder, perhaps Jesus is calling us to be more like State Farm and to be a good neighbor. <laughs> be there. The Samaritan in the text just didn't hand the man some food and water and money and be on his merry way. Now what the Samaritan did for that Jewish man made him a good neighbor, Bobby. The Samaritan, he came to the wounded, the wounded traveler and he bandaged up his wound and he poured war oil and perfect wine on them. And then he put them, him on his animal and took him to an inn and took care of him. This meant he spent some time with the man building a relationship. Beloved, God is calling us outside the four walls of the church building, outside of these pre-made platforms. He's calling us to, uh, he is a, he is great to, it's great to gather us for worship, and we should. But in 2022, God is calling us to do and to be more, and it requires us moving outside of these walls. Yeah. People shouldn't have to find the church. We, the church, should find the people. Yeah. What corners, yeah. what pockets, what streets yeah. do we yeah. need to touch? We yeah. can't continue to do yeah. church the same way that we've always done yeah. church and expect a different result. That's church insanity. Right. We have to be willing to get up and go out. out. Matthew 28, 19 and, and 20 says, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Yes. I have commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you, even in the midst of it all. Yeah. Now we have to reimagine, reimagine church in a way that ministers to those that aren't already sitting inside these walls. Uh, a friend of mine used to close his voicemail message like this. And as my grandfather used to say, be good and do good. Mm. I, I thought about this much, Elder Beverly, especially with the events of this week, especially with the events that our members are experiencing in this life. What, does it, what is the difference between be good and do good? And so I found myself processing this because I think it's at the core of what it means to be a good Samaritan. You see, why did the word good have to define the Samaritan? Why couldn't it have been a Samaritan doing good work rather than defined as a good Samaritan? I don't want to be defined as a good black. I don't want to be defined as a good woman. I don't want to be defined as a good, good shepherd. I want to be a shepherd who's doing good work. And so as I thought about that, Deacon Thomas, I, I, I tried to find a different interpretation in this text, and I believe that two words came to my mind, transactional and relational. Yeah. You see, the difference in being good and doing good is the difference in being transactional and relational. Yeah. And the priest and the Levite, and perhaps me and you, are so busy doing good, being in transactional relationships, serving the church, passing out water, handing money out of our window, doing our Christian duty, yeah. that, and that, we, that we miss what the good Samaritan did or what that Samaritan did. We really should be uh, in more relationship with one another. You see, the man didn't just throw some band-aids and some, some alcohol at the man and say, you're on your own. He didn't leave him a plate and some water at the, at the site. No, he picked the man up. He touched the man. And that meant he had to trust the person who was there. And so the Jewish man who had been robbed had to understand that this man was there for his good to be in relationship with him and not just to swipe his debit That's card. Right. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. And so when I'm in relationship with you, I don't just want to hand you the money. And that's what I missed on yesterday. What I needed to do was to get out of my car and go to that woman and love on her. Not just give her the money. Yes, she needed it. But she 
also obviously needed to be in conversation with people who mad saw her for more than the raggedy sweatpants and the raggedy shoes that she had on her feet. Yeah. She wasn't a charity case. She was a someone who needed a relationship from someone who called themselves a dutiful Christian. Yes. So this text today is beyond the Good Samaritan. It's about being people, whoever, whatever identifiers you have, be it woman, black, broken, crucified, rejected, passed by, it's you coming to the cause, yeah. meeting people outside of these walls. Yeah. I bet if I took a poll of this congregation today, all of us would say we're already saved and baptized. <laughs> and so if that's the case, yes, we are called to be in the fellowship with the believers, but what do we do beyond sitting in right, these views right. on Sunday getting our own worship? How do we push the walls, Erica, to be the sidewalks? How do we push the sidewalks, brothers and sisters, in order to be the world? Yeah. God is calling us beyond the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. To be Christians that are doing good work. That are being good work. Because it's easy to do, but it's not so easy to be. My brothers and sisters, my goal today was just to cause you to look at this text different. Good Samaritan has become this churchy cliche that we share around the world that we are good Samaritans. But can we be Christians doing the good work that Jesus did? We see Jesus do this over and over again in the Bible. He comes to the well, who obviously the people who wanted the woman at the well stone uh, had some transactional relationships yeah. with her. Yeah. But Jesus instead decided to develop a true relationship. Yeah. And to be in conversation yeah. with the woman at the well. Yeah. And then he says to the woman, Go and sin no more. Just as he says to the lawyer, who would not utter that this was a good Samaritan, but rather one who showed mercy. I don't want to be a good Samaritan. I want to be a Christian who shows mercy to every single person I encounter. Yes, it might require me spending a little money. But it's so much deeper than that. Send me to the hospital that's called Mercy Hospital, where the people in there are concerned about the whole me, yeah. Yeah. and not just rendering aid to the one who desperately needs it, yeah. but rather ministering, aiding me, yes, but also ministering to the very things that I need. Amen. This is the word today yes. for the people of God.
I look at that scripture totally different now that he hit before I said that. Thanks for that. I've heard it over and over again. But just think about it. Are you going to be the Levite, the priest of the Spirit? It's our from time to church. Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all these who receive it. 
that they may drink in remembrance of the blood of the Lord which was shed for them, that they may witness to you, remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with them. Amen. 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 So after Jesus broke all those restrictions and removed all the barriers to the table, he said, this, this bread is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal, he took a cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood. Do this as often as you gather. And remember us. We leave this table affirming the good news. We have been reconciled to God. Therefore, let us be reconciled to one another.
as we rise and turn our faces home. May you be reminded of the many announcements that are in your bulletin. Please read them and move as uh, needed in order to be registered and in the spaces that you need to be in. Watch your emails tomorrow. This right to work conversation is happening this week and we will get you a link that you can register if you want to jump into that pre and see a preview of that and then join us here on the 31st. It's on Tuesday Tuesday at uh, 7 o'clock. I think it's 7 o'clock. I think it's Tuesday at 7. Um, and then join us on the 31st as well. Elder Beverly, did you have something you needed to add? No. No. Okay. All right. Beautiful. God, we just give you thanks and praise for, again, the opportunity to gather with your people and to worship with you. We thank you, God, that you have moved on our hearts and that you have moved throughout this place. And we pray that people are leaving different and better than the way they came. God, we pray that you um, be with all of those, God, who are experiencing challenges and difficulties in life. God, we pray that as we leave this place that we be reminded, God, that you are always with us in the morning and in the evening, in our coming, in our going, in our weeping and our rejoicing. For God, you are always for us. And for that, we say thank you.